Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's early. It's not even seven yet, I don't think. But I always get up early. I'm like a farmer. When you're when you're homeless, you get up in the sun, I guess, right? Like I said, production value is awesome. <coughs> this is live time, people. This is how this works, okay? You know me. I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. Didn't even check my shit in the mirror. I could have just stuff hanging off. I'm doing it, right? I'm inspired. This is what I do. I'm an artist. I can give a shit about production value, honestly. Just me and you, baby. I got like, what, five viewers now? It's happening. I'm getting hot. I'm gonna blow up any day now. Any day the internet's just gonna blow. be like the Chewbacca mom. One of my guides told me to run silent for a minute. At least about my plans, which I will, which is fine. I mean, everybody knows I'm selling art as I go, but they don't understand my real plans. My dreams, my aspirations, the books I will write, the movies I'm going to make, uh, the architect, architectural wonders I'm going to create. <sighs> anyway, today I want to talk about a story, one of my stories. I actually wrote it down, some of it, and my buddy James has it <laughs> somewhere. Hopefully he still has it. Um, and he's, he's more of an editor than I am, so I still have fun with it. To be honest, it's a really good story. Though. And that's what I'm going to tell it to you. And I will mention that the main character's name is Alexander. And I wrote this before my, my grandson was born. And my son didn't know about this book. And he didn't know about the character's name. And, but the fact that my grandson's name is Alexander is pretty awesome. So that's a fact. But yeah, the main character's name is Alexander. <clears throat> and how it goes is... He's at a hospital with his wife, and she's about to give birth. And complications, and something goes wrong, and she, the mother, ends up, uh, his his wife, ends up dying, and the baby dies. All at the, all at the same time. And as you can imagine, it's just one of those things where you, it it should be the moment of bliss and joy, and that's like the, you know, and it's just flipped. It's an absolute nightmare. So, in his moment of just stunned, just can't believe it, isn't, he can't believe what the doctors are saying. He's just not believing what they're saying. But it's sinking in, and it's just like this. It's not like a fog. And he takes that opportunity in the fog to to just instinctually just not want to be there no more. He wants to join them, so he just walks away from the doctors and he starts searching for the roof so he, so he goes up to the roof and it's nighttime and it's raining and he's standing there and he knows the ledge he knows where it's at and he notices something warm on his chest it's a it's a family heirloom. And it starts getting really hot because it's, just, it's something you just not think about right now. And so all you can think about is just leaping off that roof. So he does. He runs as fast as he can towards that ledge. And right before he gets to that ledge, he just leaps. He hits a wall. And it's an invisible wall. He didn't see it. it wasn't there a second ago. Uh, and flies back and lands on his ass. I mean, just almost knocks him out. But he's just stunned. Like, what the? Not what he was expecting, right? All of a sudden, he hears a laugh. It's an interesting laugh, but a very soothing laugh. But a laugh, nonetheless. And Gabriel appears. And of course, Alexander's a little confused about what's going on. So 
Gabriel lays it out to him. In no, no uncertain terms. <clears throat> God says no. This is not your path. Sorry. He's like, what do you mean, sorry? You know, <laughs> you can't. And I guess when God steps in, God steps in, right? So Gabriel is like trying to explain to him, you're important. You have things to do. And he's all, no, I'm not feeling nothing. I don't want none of this. So Gabriel makes him a deal. He said, I understand the pain. I understand the suffering, and that you don't want it anymore. So he makes him a deal. You won't feel anything. You will no longer feel anything, but you're gonna go work for us. You're gonna do some things. But part of the bargain will be you will feel nothing. You will not feel this pain anymore. Instantly it's gone. See? You feel nothing. You didn't. That moment you didn't feel anything. There was nothing, no pain. That heartache, that numbness, it was all gone. No thoughts of what he was just experiencing. It's all gone. We could see it and hear it and feel it, but it wasn't affecting him emotionally. So his emotions were stuck. And he looked over the ledge and he goes, and Gabriel understood what he was talking about. And he understood what he was wanted. He goes, oh really? He wanted to know if he was immortal because of this deal. So Gabriel said, go ahead. You were gonna jump, jump. So Gabriel took the ledge and ran as fast as he could. He leaped off that ledge. And there's this busy street down below. Cars still going. I know it's nighttime in the rain, but it's the city. See cars, people walking by, and he's just going straight for that pavement, head first, and you can see it. And right before he hits that pavement, something happens. And that pavement turns to water, and he goes right down in it. And it's not just any water, it's really blue and warm, oddly enough. But he's, he knows he's in water now, so he's swimming up to light. And he pops his head up on the water and he's breathing, trying to figure out what the hell's going on as he's floating around. And off in the distance, you can see a beach. And there's somebody standing on the beach, yelling at him. Are you done messing around? You can hardly hear what the hell he was saying. Next thing you know, he's standing on the beach. Dripping wet. Standing in front of this guy. You don't know who the hell this guy is. So, he's confused, obviously. <clears throat> so, Michael introduces himself, Archangel. He explains really quickly I am your trainer. I'm going to train you how to fight and be a warrior. I'm the greatest warrior ever existed. And he's going to train you. Alexander. So basically he's telling Alexander he's going to train him. And he's like, I, I trained Achilles, I trained everybody. And it's your turn. And of course, he was getting his ass kicked a lot by Archangel Michael. So Archangel Michael was teaching him how to be a warrior. For some reason that was important and part of his mission. So he, was, so he spent a couple weeks with Michael, three or four, training intensely. And that was a good start. And then finally, like three months into it, he, he turns to Archangel Michael and he says, okay, so I've been training with, with the greatest warrior ever known to exist, ethereally, whatever. How will I know when I'm ready? I mean, because he's never going to beat Michael, right? So how would I know when I'm ready to go? Angel Michael said, that's a good point. And he clapped his hands. Next thing you know, Alexander's in a ring. It's a cage match kind of ring, like WWF. And, he's, and there's people on the outside just screaming for blood. 
and it's a, it's a cage match and he's looking over at this 400 pound monster just sweaty and pissed and ready to just rip his head off and he's like what the hell and yeah that was his test and all of a sudden he started feeling pissed angry he wanted to rip this guy's head off he's like wait a minute I'm not supposed to be feeling nothing. Next you know, a bell goes off and this monster comes at him like, like he's gonna just really, you know, put a beat down. Five seconds later, the monster is on the floor out. And all that hate and all that anger and desire to do damage to another human being was gone instantly. The minute that guy's head, that big old gorilla's head hit the floor. He was out. So he's standing in this ring surrounded by, and everybody in the outside of the ring shut up, obviously. So he was ready. But there was a problem. He felt. And that was a problem. And so he got mad. And he wanted to know why he was feeling something he wasn't supposed to feel. In comes the teacher. Metatron. He finds himself in a big library, huge, ancient library. Books, scrolls, just strewn everywhere. Metatron, standing before him, explaining to Alexander about his history, about his family, about the, the pact that they made with God. Walk in the light and serve. His parents, when he was a child, died in a car wreck. So he was orphaned, didn't know anybody. He just had the relic. It's one of the things that was passed on to him. But no siblings, no grandparents, no records. So orphan, pretty much. But Metatron explains that his parents didn't die in a car wreck. They were killed, purposely. As you walk in the light, there is darkness, and darkness does not want the light to succeed. Vice versa, right? So he explains to him about his family lineage. Going back to Achilles and before. But he decided to tell him about Achilles. That was a special story. He explained the beginning of his family in some ways, from the beginning of the pact. So he begins to tell a story of Achilles being <clears throat> killed in the Iliad the way he was, which wasn't actually. Oh, Achilles dies, but not the way they portrayed in the Iliad. The Greek king laying siege to a kingdom that was kicking their ass and winning. So he, he called upon Achilles to be his warlord and lead his men into battle because he knew Achilles, you know, with Achilles commanding his men, he could not lose. So he offered Achilles something that nobody else had, magic, magic coins. Supposedly, there was 30 pieces of magic silver. So they were, they were very rare and special. He was willing to give these to Achilles as a reward for the kingdom and any other, you know, anything else he requires. And Achilles knew about this silver. And it was intriguing enough, and he was bored. He was the warlord. He was the, that's what he did. That's what he so it wasn't like he was going to turn down anyways, but it was always nice to have some incentive. Women or whatever. So Achilles accepts, and he goes along with this Greek king who he despises. Has nothing but contempt for this king. But he's a warlord, and there's a war, and that's business, right? So he decides to do it. And he goes into this kingdom. And this, the interesting thing about this kingdom it's it's ran by a woman, a queen. 
not only is she a queen, but she's an Amazon queen, uh, in the traditional sense. All their women were warriors, like the men. They were all equal. As a matter of fact, the tradition is simple. When a man courts a woman in that kingdom, and a woman has no interest in that man, and he continues to pursue that woman, she can call him out in battle. And it usually ends in the guy dying. Because women, if a woman doesn't want you, she don't want you. If she, you're not going to... Yeah, this was old school stalker shit when the women would just take you out. And the man would either give up. And th there was another test that they would do. If a man did want to court a woman and she was interested, there was a tradition that also applied. If a woman cut a man first, he wasn't fit to be her husband. So if a woman beat a man in battle... To begin with, if she cut you first, then you were not were automatically not worthy, and she would refuse your proposal, even if she liked you, even if she wanted you, you wouldn't be worthy. It was tradition. <clears throat> anyway, and this kingdom was ran by a woman, and she was a badass. So Achilles takes these men in the battle, and they fight. But there was a problem. We'll get to that. The battle ended with a draw, and Achilles and his men retreated. And the king was upset. He expected instant victory. So he called Achilles to his tent. Achilles was pissed and not happy and then disturbed in some odd way that the king couldn't understand. And Achilles said, we will take them, don't worry. So the king said, okay, this is obviously there's a problem with you. What? And it was the women. The king realized that. The woman warriors. Achilles had a problem with that. I'll get to it. So the king said, fine. Let's find another way to do this. How about I just give you permission to, to do what you got to do and you go in the kit and you kidnap the princess, the queen. Is that a possibility for you just to kidnap the queen and then hold a ransom and then we can take the city or whatever? At least get some gold out of this. You know, you know drain their, their treasury or whatever. So Achilles realizes that this might be an easier way for him to get this over with. And apparently the, the idea of killing women or fighting women in battle was disgusting to him. You have to understand, Achilles saw women as servants or sexual partners at best, but not equal in battle. It just wasn't done. He, he had never fought against women with warriors, and they were good, and they were killing his men. And he wasn't understanding how these women were so good. And, they weren't, and then he saw that they were killing. Not only were they good, but... I think the part that disturbed him the most was that they were when he saw them being killed. Seeing women being killed in battle is not pretty. And it, it was distasteful for him. He felt it was beneath him something. And that's why the battle ended early. So Achilles decides he's gonna do this. He's gonna you know, he's Achilles, he can do whatever the fuck he wants, right? So he gets into the castle or the fortress. <clears throat> And he's outside the, the queen's chamber. He's actually got into her chamber, the private chamber. And next to her private chamber, right outside that door is the war room where they have the big table, the maps, and all the, you know, where they discuss the next plan of attack. So here he is waiting for her to come into her room so he can, you know, tie her up and whatnot and take her. <clears throat> So she walks into the war room and she's followed by about eight generals. And they're all war torn veterans. You're talking about men in their 50s, 60s, 40s, battle hard warriors. And they were listening to her every word. And Achilles was just fascinated by that. He was, he, they were giving this woman respect that he'd never seen a woman get before. And she was saying something that he didn't like to hear. She said, we have, an, we have a chance, boys. 
He doesn't like killing women. She's all, you can see it in his face. That's why he left the battlefield. So we have a chance. There's something that she was looking, clinging to hope, knowing that Achilles was... Can you imagine having to fight against Achilles? He, so yeah, she knew that they were in trouble, but at the same time, she tried. She she was looking for a way to it, an advantage, and she found it. He doesn't like killing women. <clears throat> so she said she. They made some plans. They talked about things, and then they retired for the night. And the way they respected her was was just something he'd never seen before. So he was intrigued by this one. I mean, she's a goddess. Come on, you're a warrior woman. She is beautiful, yes, whatever. Let's get into that. So he goes, she's going into her chambers, thinking she's just gonna go to sleep, retire for the night, clean up, whatever, take off her armor. And then she realizes once she gets in the room and the door closes that she's not alone. And the swords go flying. She instantly knows where he's at and finds him and starts to uh, just attacks. Assumes it's just an assassin, doesn't realize who it is. But once she does, she doesn't stop. She's fight. She's just fighting like a wild cat. And he's blocking. He's doing his thing. And finally, in the middle of the battle, she realizes that she cut him. And she instantly stopped and backed away. And this is Achilles. She knew about Achilles. She didn't, she didn't, she's... You know, she grew up on the legends, right? So every warrior wants to be Achilles. So here she is, and she cut him. She cut Achilles. 